Have you ever struggled to achieve the things that you've always wanted in life? You know the situation where you, you start something and you've got weeks and weeks to go and you keep putting it off, you keep putting it off until the final week comes and then all of a sudden you feel stressed out of your mind and you're overwhelmed. You know that feeling? Or maybe you decided that you wanted to get super fit like uh, this is something you want to do all your life and so you do all the research and you get all psyched up and all excited and you get down to the gym, sign up for a 12 month get your clothes on, get down to the gym and what happens? After 12 weeks or 13 weeks, it's a flop. You ever ask yourself why this happens? So this is a problem that I personally suffered from for a number of years and I've researched and I've trialed and errored and I finally came upon the two most profound things that absolutely changed my life. And inshallah ta'ala, today I'm gonna to share with you these two things. In my own life, when I've been unable to complete the things that I began, uh, I started to wonder, and what happens normally when you start to, when, when this happens con continuously, what happens? Your, your confidence is affected. And then you start to compare yourself with all those other people that you know that are achieving the things that you want to be achieving. And before you know it, like you're on an all-time low. So what do you do? How can you get over this? Now, the number one solution to this, and this is, this is the foremost, your thoughts determine the outcome meaning your thoughts determine the life that you end up living. And this is the secret of this is found in the statement of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, who said, Indeed, actions are determined by intentions. So what is, what is an intention? Couldn't we agree that an int intention is a purposely decided upon thought? Look at the beauty in this. The Messenger of Allah informed us that depending on what you put in, what you get out will differ. Your thoughts, your intentions, determines the a'mal, the actions. And the actions are what determines how your life turns out. What actions you take determines how your life turns out. Have you ever wondered why some mornings you wake up and you have a good day? Some mornings you wake up and you have a bad day. You know, like you wake up one morning and it's one of those great days and you feel totally energized and, and you're ready to go out and, and deal with the world and give it your best. You're totally positive. Like how is it that you haven't taken any action? You just got out of bed and you feel great. Whereas on another day, on the inverse, you wake up one morning and you feel terrible. You feel terrible and you feel low and, and you don't really feel like giving much to the world. You don't really feel like giving much to yourself. Now, how is it that we have good days and bad days? I asked myself this over a number of years and, uh, and I was always trying to figure out how can I turn my bad days into good days? Because I'm one of those people that when my day begins bad, it, the whole day goes that way. And, uh, and I have a terrible day. So I decided that I, I needed to change this. Like, uh, and ultimately, this was the key. What you put in is what you get out. So in the morning, what happens? Let me explain this to you. In the morning you wake up and you feel great, you feel energized, and what is it? You're thinking about something that happened to you maybe yesterday, or a good thought, or a good memory, and those thoughts are recurring in your mind, and you're constantly thinking about them, and it makes you feel great. It makes you feel amazing, and it makes you, it, energizes and puts power into your day. Whereas the opposite, which is to wake up in the morning and you feel terrible, but if you think about why you're feeling terrible, you're thinking about something that possibly happened yesterday that really upset you and uh, you're, you're replaying these images, these thoughts in your mind and, uh, and they're dragging you down and they're sucking the life out of us, right? And who likes that? None of us like that, right? So what can you do to change that? The solution is in that statement. What you put in determines what you get out. So if you change what you put in, you can absolutely get a different reality. Now, because the, the thoughts lead to actions and the actions lead to your end results, the fruits. Social scientists are telling us that the mind works like a sponge. The mind soaks up any information that you feed it, whether it's true or false, by the way. So any information that you're feeding the mind, the mind soaks it up. And, but the thing is, the mind can't differentiate between what is, good and, uh, what is uh, true and false. So what do we do here? We feed our minds with good information. The food that you eat 
it reflects in, in, in the physique that you have and the mental state, right? So the, just like that, the information, which is the food for our, our, our minds, the information that you feed your mind determines how you feel because ultimately your, your mind tells you that you can do it or you can't do it. It tells you, it, it transforms those ideas into actions. And those actions are what lead to great results. So great thoughts, great thoughts will lead to great results. If you, now, if you're in doubt about this, just look at the media, the news. The news is sending out the same information over and over again, over and over again, every day. Now, whether it's true or not, your mind can't differentiate. And ultimately, the people end up believing whatever they're allowing into their minds. So whatever goes in determines what comes out. So their actions, their behavior has been predetermined by the thoughts that are being fed into their minds. What about when you have a nightmare? You wake up from a nightmare and you, you, you've broken a cold sweat and, and you feel terrible and, it's, and this fear has overtaken your body. But the reality is that it is something that was just in your mind. It wasn't even real. The second big idea is excuses. Like stomp the excuses, crush the excuses because this is the single biggest enemy to the self that there is. Because every time you and I, we decide to do something great and we're all excited about it, all energetic, like that's it, we're pumped, we're gonna do it, and in comes the excuse and bam, it's over. Now, now if you are one who suffers from excusitis like I have for many, many years, there, there are three types of excuses that you really must be aware of. And these three, if you can manage to gain a control over them, then you can absolutely change your life. Number one, is the distraction excuse. The distraction excuse is the excuse that we make when we should be doing something now, but instead we choose to do something secondary, right? We, what's most important right now, instead of doing that, we choose to do something secondary. And uh, maybe because it's, it's a fear that we have or whatever the reason is, but we choose not to do the thing that we should be doing right now. For example, in my previous career, I was working in the city and uh, one of the most important things in that role was that we had to be communicating with our clients on a daily basis. But then some of us, we, what we found is that some of the people, they, for the fear of dealing with a client, they would make excuses. And those excuses that they gave themselves, the thoughts that they fed into their minds, were that, you know, market research is just as important. So, you know, I'll busy myself with market research or I'll do something else but the thing that should be done right now isn't being done. So that's the first one, the distraction excuse. Number two, this is the memory excuse. The memory excuse, the, let me give you an example to explain. My, when I was learning how to uh, ride a bike, this was my first bike and I didn't, it didn't have brakes by the way. So I thought, today I'm gonna learn how to ride a bike. I rode it down a hill and, uh, and obviously gained momentum. We're going down the hill and we're going pretty fast, get to the bottom of the hill and I can't stop. What happens? I went straight into a car, flew over the bike and landed on the bonnet. And you can imagine the, the pain that I felt. So that pain then became ingrained in my mind. Later, I wanted to learn how to uh, skateboard. And what happened then? The memory came back to me and I gave myself the excuse that no, I can't do this because I felt the pain of uh, the, the previous incident. The third type of excuse, and this is the pessimism excuse. And uh, me, we, most of us uh, suffer from this at one time or another. What do we say? We say that I, it can't be done, I can't do it, this, this opportunity, uh, it looks great but it's not for me, um, I'm not cut out for this. There's so many excuses. The last one, uh, and this is, this is uh, probably you and I, we, all, we, we both suffer from this, like we always say, I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered meaning, uh, I fear to fail in this, so I'm not gonna even give it a try. And that's a non-starter right from the beginning. So these are the three types of excuses. Now these three ex types of excuses, that you could think of others if you like, but ultimately the excuses are what prevents us from achieving what we want in life. Like when we want to do something and we set out to do it, what happens? Like we start telling ourselves excuses. We start feeding ourselves these excuses and then we, we convince ourselves because remember what I said, the social scientists are telling us that the mind, whatever information is given to it, it soaks it up. It doesn't, it doesn't differentiate between that which is correct and incorrect or which is a lie and which is not. And ultimately, it ends up believing it. Your mind believes it. 
And when, once your mind has accepted it as a fact, then your actions are, mani are a manifestation. It, like it's a direct result of your thoughts. So the fruits of great thoughts are great results. But if you're in a habit of not doing what you want to do, because it's become habitual now, because you've done it so often, and you're afraid of the risk, let me give you a safety net. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us in Surah Al-Baqarah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, If my servant asks of me, indeed I'm close. Ujibu da'wata da'i idha da'ani. I answer the call of the one who is calling to me. Simple rule. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you ask, you will receive. If you ask, you will receive. So there's your safety net. So even if you and I were limited in our ability to actually achieve what we're trying to achieve, but we give it a shot anyway, we try, we tell ourselves that it is possible, and then we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah for it. So the reality is that you can do anything you want to do. All you have to do is give it a try, tell yourself that it's possible, and then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that very thing. And Allah tells you, if they ask, I'll give it to them. It's as simple as that. You cannot fail if you don't like your current reality or you'd like to change it or improve it and make it better. Like change your thought. If you change your thought, your actions will change. If you change your thoughts, your action will change. Great thoughts lead to great results. Jazakumullah khair. I'm your brother, Abdul Shaheed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.